this might just have to be a grind it out year for the Georgia Bulldogs. Maybe for all of college football. That's at least what it's starting to seem like, right? Look across the country. Look at what's happening. Watch these Georgia games. If Georgia goes on to win the national championship, which they are contenders, right? I don't see how they're not contenders still, even with the lost Alabama. We'll talk about Vanderbilt a little bit and all that. But uh, Georgia and Auburn this past weekend. Slow burn. Georgia scores in each quarter. Slowly beat Auburn. It wasn't just, hey, we're going to race out. We're going to beat you in the first half. And then we're going to sit on the ball and just run the clock out in the second half. That's kind of what you saw a lot of when Georgia won the national championship in 2021, and then again back when they went back-to-back and won in 2022. During those two seasons, Georgia crushed you early and then suffocated you in the second half. That was a common theme with a lot of those teams. I think about them blowing out Oregon. I think about in 2022, um, they kind of crushed Auburn in the second half. They crushed South Carolina early, right? Well, now you're seeing this year, Georgia's fighting with Kentucky till the end. Georgia's fighting with Alabama until the end when it got crushed in the first half. Georgia danced around with Clemson for the entire second half. Didn't really put away Tennessee Tech in the way you thought that they would, the way that you know that Georgia team could have. Maybe that was part of the game script against Tennessee Tech. I think the Golden Eagles was their mascot. But when I look at this year, you know, it, part of it is the offense is just not as explosive Right? They're, they're not hitting on as many explosive plays. Part of it is uh, this team is not as talented as it was when it was winning national championships. Am I allowed to say that? Am I going to get accosted if I said that? I don't think that this team is as good. Right? And, and that's fine at this point in time. There's plenty of time to prove me wrong. Right? These takes are fluid. As, as we get more information, I'm not married to the fact that I think Georgia's worse than when it won the national championship in 2021. I think Georgia's worse than when it won the national championship in 2022. I think that a lot of the championship teams from the 2010s and, and even just a couple of years ago would go undefeated in this college football season because I don't think that there is a dominant elite team yet. Now, two teams that I that I believe in that are still undefeated. There are obviously some obviously some teams that are undefeated that I don't believe in, Penn State, Oregon, right? Texas and Ohio State at the top, one and two right now. I think those teams can still be elite, they can still be dominant, and, and Georgia can still be an elite team and, and still be dominant, had just already lost to Alabama. And we've seen national champions win what they lost. It happened in 21 when Georgia lost the SEC championship and still went on to win the national championship. But I think that there's just not a true elite powerhouse this year. TBD on Texas and Ohio State. Maybe Texas beats Georgia up pretty bad and, and goes on and kind of dominates everybody. That's still on the table. But I think for Georgia... It's just going to have to be a grinded out type of season. I've got a few different things that I want to talk about. We talked about some of this on the riding home after the game, but I want to talk about the crowd in relation to this. I want to talk about the rest of the country in relation to this. I want to talk about how (sighs) I think that this is going to come down to who's hot at the end, who's got the best coaching, and who's the healthiest that, those are the things that I think that this this college football season are going to come down to. Ryan Curley from Dog Post talking about how wacky of a college football season this has been, and for Georgia, how I think this isn't going to be easy. It was never easy, but I think that it's going to just take everything that it's got in order to win the whole thing. And I don't think it took that necessarily those first two seasons. Here is to put it in perspective. It's a perspective you should have is from our newsletter, by the way, which I'm linking down below. But I want to put in perspective the chaos, the chaos that has happened in college football this year. This is not all in an exact order, but some of it relates to each other. And just listen to everything I'm about to say because this is this is ridiculous. Just the way this college football season has gone. I probably missed some of these games. Notre Dame beat Texas A&M week one down there in College Station. Texas A&M looked like they didn't know how to score. Missouri. Almost lost to Vanderbilt in double overtime a week after they were down to Boston College, a team that is not as good as we thought it was after beating Florida State, who's terrible, by the way. Alabama beat Georgia. Alabama lost to Vanderbilt. Arkansas beat Tennessee. Tennessee beat NC State by a lot. Georgia State beat Vanderbilt, right? So there's a little chain reaction there. 
Cal beat Auburn. Cal almost beat Miami. They were up 35-10 to 10 in the second half. Texas A&M. All of a sudden is ranked number 15. They whipped Missouri. Whooped Missouri. Who, like I said, struggled after dominating Cupcake Kings the first couple weeks. South Carolina. Ooh, this one's fun. South Carolina destroyed Kentucky. And they almost beat LSU. And then Kentucky almost beat Georgia. Do I need to keep going? Penn State almost lost to Bowling Green. Right? And now they're kind of choking out Illinois and teams like that. USC beat LSU. Then USC lost to Minnesota. UNC, or excuse me, UNC lost to Minnesota. I just mixed up USC and USC. I ruined my little thing there that I was doing. USC beat LSU. Then they lost to Minnesota. Minnesota lost to North Carolina. North Carolina lost 70 to 50 to James Madison. And James Madison just lost to Louisiana Monroe. There are more chaotic games that have happened in college football this season. Nebraska beat Colorado and pretty badly, and then Nebraska lost Illinois. We can keep going. Michigan just lost this past weekend. Michigan's now lost twice, which I don't think is the craziest thing in the world, but still, it's been a chaotic college football season. I just, you know, list a lot of games that don't make total sense because of other games that have happened in the sport. You got to keep your head on a swivel. Alabama, Kalen DeBoer and the Alabama Crimson Tide went from having an instant classic regular season football game, one of the best regular season wins of all time for an Alabama program, a top five win at night, presidents in town, lots going on. This is the game of game of the year, the, the, all the history between Georgia and Bama. Beat them, almost lost after their crush in Georgia, and then they followed it up by losing to Vanderbilt. Georgia could have easily lost to Kentucky. I just think that this is not a season where we should expect a team to plow through the rest of the country. Unless Texas, Ohio State, you know, maybe Penn State still has it in it. Maybe Oregon still has it in it. I don't trust those two as much. But when you look at Texas and Ohio State right now, they're the only teams that can go without a blemish that I think are true, true championship contenders. With Georgia and Alabama, I still think championships on the table. But now it says, hey, you know, you got to tighten up because... You know, Mississippi State's on the docket this week for Georgia. Texas and Mississippi State danced around a little bit longer than I thought. I thought that Texas was going to blow out Mississippi State. Well, that didn't happen. And now Georgia is playing Mississippi State. I do think Georgia's going to beat Mississippi State by double digits. I think they'll probably win by 20-plus. Are they going to cover a 34-and-a-half, 35-point line? Probably not. I'm probably not going to pick them to cover that, that big line like I have been picking them to cover over and over again. But they better show up because... Kentucky showed up for Georgia. South Carolina showed up for Kentucky. Alabama showed up for Georgia. And then Vanderbilt showed up for Alabama. Especially in the conference, you're seeing just everyone beat up on each other, beat up on each other. Are we starting to see a little bit of the results of the transfer portal, of NIL, of realignment? Maybe it's evening the playing field a little bit. Maybe maybe we're not going to see as much domination in college football. I thought that we would because you still get, you know, the money involvement. You can get a really good roster like Ohio State, but I feel, you know, I, I don't think Ohio State's just going to plow through the country. I, I don't know that I've seen enough from Ohio State to say that, and I don't see that about Texas either. Why will Texas got to play Georgia? I, you know, which is their toughest game by far and, and is likely going to have to play an SEC championship. So they're going to at least have two huge battles before it goes on to the college football playoff. But for Georgia, let's go back to Georgia. Like Mississippi State this week, Texas the week after that, bye week after Texas. Then you got to go down to Jacksonville. you got to do all that emotional rigmarole, even if Florida is not in the same universe as Georgia. And then you've got to go to Ole Miss. you got to play Tennessee at home. Non-stop gauntlet. Non-stop chaos. This isn't ending anytime soon this season. And Georgia's not healthy. Right? Michael Williams has been dealing with injuries. Warren Brinson has been dealing with injuries. Christian Miller sustained an injury the other day. Xavier McLeod, I'm only talking about defensive line right now, was injured until he came in a couple of weeks ago. So is he 100% healthy? Georgia's still without its assumed number two running back in Roderick Robinson. Their, their biggest power threat. Um, you know, obviously, 
the Len Humphreys thing, that seems kind of temporary. But on the offensive line, you got Tate Rattler, who's out for an extended period of time. Jared Wilson was dealing with an injury during fall camp, and now he's dealing with one during the season. I mean, it's... It, Tom Munden was hurt the other day. So there's a lot that Georgia needs to get through, but they need to start faster. They need to... Uh, it just can't be what, it, what it's been if they want to win the national championship. They can't go to sleep for a couple quarters, and then try to do it in the second half. And sometimes it's just the way that the game goes, but in other cases, this team's just not quite as good. And I'm not coming here telling you that I think Georgia's not not going to make a playoff run, not going to be in the NCAA championship, but those things are still on the table. But this is a grinded-out type of football season. Chaos. Chaos! Newsletter down below. Thanks for watching.